The following program is a public service of Gulf Coast State College, WKGC, and Commodore Productions. And now, the Military Hour with Carrie Dieter. Welcome to another edition of Military Hour. I have a very special brother and guest with me today, Dean Resch. Thank you for coming. It's always My a pleasure. pleasure to see you. My and pleasure. we've got a little bit in common other than our service. We're both cancer survivors. We are. And hallelujah, and thanks for that. We are. And uh, Dean gave me a personal gift this morning I'm going to pull out. And uh, I cherish this and will treasure this. And thank you for that. Appreciate it. Not necessary, but thanks. You're welcome. Dean's going to share some information with us this morning that is extremely important. And um, why don't you fill us in on what you got on your mind? Well, what I've got on my mind every day, two major, major items. One is PTSD, veterans, and the other is a suicide rate. Right. So I'd like to talk about the PTSD first and um, talk about the number of PSD that has affected the servicemen. Operational Iraqi Freedom and Enduring Freedom, about 11 to 20 out of every 100 veterans who served in OIF or OEF have PTSD. <sighs> Gulf War, Desert Storm, about 12 out of every 100. Veterans, uh, about 12% have PTSD have PTSD in any given year, Vietnam veterans. About 15 out of every 100 Vietnam veterans, about 15% currently diagnosed with PTSD. You know, this is sad. Yep. The National Vietnam Veterans Readjustment Study, it's estimated about 30 out of every 100 or 30% of Vietnam veterans have PTSD in their lifetime. Yeah. And some of the common symptoms of PTSD, which we need to look for in our friends and brothers. Oh, yeah. Feeling upset by things that remind you of what's happened. Flashbacks, having nightmares, vivid memories, feeling emotionally cut off from others. That's a big one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that is huge, huge, huge. And remember, there's no cure for PTSD. You can leave the war, but the war never leaves you. You learn to deal. Now, I want to talk about suicide a little bit. VA says that the average of 20 veterans, and that number kind of floats between 20 and 22, depending on where you read it, but I get this right. off the VA, so sure. they say 20 veterans succumb to suicide every day. In its newest version, the VA was more specific. The report shows that a total of 20.6 suicides every day. Of those, 16.8 were veterans, 3.8 were active duty servicemen, mm. guardsmen, and reservists. The, that amounts to 6,132 veterans and 1,387 service members who died by suicide in one year. Suicide hotline. Um, get a pencil, write this down. It is 1-800-273-8255. One more time, please. Sure. 1-800. 273-8255 and then press one. And I encourage everybody, look for the signs. We can't let this happen. I mean, if they survive like we survived and then to end their life in a suicide, yeah. how sad. Yeah. You know, that's just yeah, not. It's a waste. And, and if I may real quick, I, I know you've got your agenda laid out, but. Oh, please. Coupled with that right here, uh, Matt Standish, has the vet center open and operational. And if you're having an issue and you go out there, nothing is reported to the VA. They have qualified uh, counselors out there and it's all strictly confidential. And Which is right important. Behind Haney. Yeah, mm -hmm. because you know as well as I do, most people uh, walk around, I did, I can't say you did, but it's like, I'm okay. There's nothing wrong with me. It, it, well, guess what? It wasn't. You're not okay. Yeah, it was. But in my mind, I kept telling myself it was until you hit that bottom. You do. And Yeah. And then that was, I need help. Well, uh, with your indulgence, I'll talk about the signs of a person who might Please. be suicidal. Please do. And I, again, say always look for these signs. <clears throat> Appearing sad or depressed most of the time. Hopelessness, feeling like there's no way out. Anxiety, 
agitation, sleeplessness, or mood swings. Feeling as if there's no reason to live. If you ever hear somebody say that, boy, that's, a, oh, yeah. that's an indicator. Rage or anger. Engaging in risky activities without thinking. Losing interest in hobbies, work, and school. This is another big one. Increased alcohol or drug use. Self-medicating. Yes, sir. Neglecting personal welfare. Deteriorating physical appearance. Showing violent behavior, like punching a hole in the wall or egging on to get into fights. Giving away prized possessions, another indicator. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Very, very, ugh. very important. Getting affairs in order, tying up loose ends or writing a will, which everybody should do anyway. Right. You know, we've certainly encouraged that, but if all of a sudden one of your friends is sitting in a corner writing a will, that might be an indicator. You might check into that one. Yeah. Now, the following are signs of a uh, suicidal tendency that require immediate action. Think about hurting or killing yourself, looking for ways to kill yourself, mm -hmm. talking about death, dying, or suicide. Self-destructive behavior such as drug use, weapons, opiates, we can go on and on. Oh yeah. And this is so sad. And you know, we're here to talk about veterans, but this is for everybody. Oh, yeah. Most especially veterans, of course, but everybody should be looking for signs because there's other people, especially now with what's going up on the, the East Coast with the hurricane, when people start losing everything, oh, yeah. there'll be some thoughts about, well, Nothing left for me. It could be a tipping point. Yeah, so, uh, yes, tipping point. Yeah. Hope not. Sure hope and pray not. Me too. I'm going to uh, switch gears. I'd like to talk about one other thing. Yes, sir? Before you switch gears, yeah. can I interject real quick? Sure. A, a, an asset and a brother here locally that addresses this issue, and he's having some success with it, and my hat's off to him, and you may know him or heard of it, the Hope Project, mm -hmm. David Trogdon, mm -hmm. yeah. So, and all free, and uh, veterans, first responders, police, kids, children, yeah, you know, abused kids. He says, come on, bring them. Yes. And, uh, what a marvelous man, great brother. Love well, him. you know, there's some wonderful people out there that just oh, yeah. quietly go along, and they're not looking for thanks. Oh, no, 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 they just do it from their heart. And that's so important. Yeah, he's one of the most, probably most humble men I've, I've met in my life. Absolutely. And just stellar. Just you bet. Outstanding. Now, I'm sorry for that. That's no, okay. Anytime. Please. <laughs> um, now, I'd like to talk about something that I do personally. As you know, um, I go out to the Sims Veterans Home. Yep. And I'm a hospice volunteer. And that's the only place I go is to Sims because I don't want to get sick in a hospital. You know, you and I are on, yeah, you know. Yeah, you've had the cancer, it's kind oh, of yeah. like, uh, yes, sir. I love you from right here, I don't want to get too close, because the system's the, compromised. The home, most of them are, are end stage. Right. And uh, I'm not, not worried about communicable diseases out there at all. Yeah. There's residents that live there that are not end stage that I visit also. Sure. But my, my marching orders, if you will, uh, from Covenant, I get, about once a week, I get a letter with names, mostly the same every week, and those are the people I visit behind locked doors. Right. The people in, in dementia and Alzheimer's and all types of cancers. You know, and that's near and dear to my heart. Anyhow, um, I'm the only veteran uh, volunteer out there right now. And it, you don't have to be a veteran to be a volunteer. And I was at my Rotary Club meeting one day and a representative from the Covenant Care was given a briefing and just happened to mention that the Sims Veterans Home volunteer couldn't do it anymore and they didn't have one. Well, that didn't sit well with me. So I went to the class, and I'll tell you a little bit about that in a moment, got my background check and made sure I had a TV and all that. Right. And I went out there, and the first time I went out there, I don't mind telling you, I was nervous. I didn't know how I'd react. You and I have both seen yeah. death before, yeah. so that's not a surprise, but these are veterans near and dear to us. But I'll tell you what, when I walked out of there, I was on cloud nine. Just the fact that I might have touched one person yep. makes all the difference. Anyhow. Have you met Maxine? 
Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Wonderful. Oh yeah. I, mean, yeah. I won't go down the list because we know a lot of them. We do. We, we frequent. Them. We do, and I know. Same thing with Covenant. I mean, what great people. And I go out there. I like to go on Saturdays and holidays because mostly holidays people yeah. have other things that they're doing. But they, folks out there need to be visited. Most of them don't even know that I'm there, or they forget as soon as I walk away. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. It's okay by me. So um, we're. I am soliciting people to think about volunteering at Covenant, and the requirements are it's an eight-hour class uh, that talks about uh, how you contact, having contact with patients and their family, very important. Um, two hours are, uh, it's an orientation of Covenant, six additional hours of training for patient family support volunteers. This includes f clinical care and comfort psychological, spiritual care, grief and bereavement, com communication skills, and volunteer documentation. And that sounds like a lot, but it's not. It, it's very easy, very laid back, uh, very professional. And of course, there's snacks and, and coffee and drinks to, to keep you going for the class. And during the class, I kept saying, gee, <laughs> do I really wanna be here? Is this something I wanna do? But let me tell you, the first time I went, nothing like it. I wouldn't trade it for anything. It, huh? Yes, yeah. I surrendered to it. Yeah, understood. So you, you go through the training with Covenant at Covenant. Background check is done from Sims because it's it's. Well, a, it's for Sims. Uh, for Sims. Yeah, yeah. You, tur you get fingerprinted and, and new sure. background check, which you and I are. That's, <laughs> that's standard. That's yes. SOP. So and uh, you go to the class, and then one of the volunteers will go with you the first time, and after that you're on your own. But it's. So we Great. need more volunteers. Oh, we need for Sims. Of course, yeah, for more Sims. volunteers for the for the Covenant Care sure. for home visits and things like that. Right. But right now, I'm the only one that goes to Sims, and I would like to have more people go out there. We need to fix that, folks. Yep, need to fix it. And there's no cost for the class. Oh no no no, so, no no no. Yeah, so you can't beg out and say I don't have the money to do this, that, or the other. And they have uh, from time to time, and I think uh, today might be one of them. They have a volunteers luncheon once a month. Charity work is tax deductible. Oh yes. So. Yep. And of course, 501 C3. That's for your car. Uh, yep. Covenant Care. Yep. So anything that you might want to do with them, if you have to travel somewhere, but I just go back and forth to Sims. It's not a big deal for me. We fed them yesterday, and most of the posts do, right? Yes. We fed the veterans yesterday at the Sherman DFW. Yep. At Wainwright. Now I've been there. That's where I saw you the last time. Yeah, right? it is. That's the cool. anniversary. Yep. Remember? Sure was. Yep. That's right. Yeah. So. You have a better memory than I do. Well. I don't know. The fact that I'm reading these things doesn't say much for my memory. Since uh, you're smart, you write things down. I have to. <laughs> so I have to. Uh, the location of Covenant Care is on um, 1007 19th Street in Panama City. Yep. And just go past the Shrine Absolutely. Temple and just keep going straight, cross Harrison, and it's on your right. Not very far. And then what I do when I go to Sims, I don't like to go through town with all the traffic lights. Yeah. So I slip over to 11th Street and go all the way out and turn and come right back to Tram Road and, you know, easy. I traverse the same. Oh, yeah, and it's only 35 miles an hour, but going 35 gives you a chance to get your thoughts together and. At least you're moving. Yeah, and you're moving. Oh yeah. Lights. Yeah. And there's very few lights. Yeah. And I have, I'm very lucky. I have friends in my Rotary Club that um, introduced a, a lady that makes. Uh, lap blankets oh. for wheelchairs and chairs and stuff and I usually take about 30 or 40 of those out to Sims and other places that are, are charity and drop them off and then at the 4th of July she made red white and blue ones so when you go out to the welcome center you'll see a couple of them out there Good. and it, that's a that's an ongoing event um, the lady who does it's very old and my friend from the Rotary Club was speaking with her one day watching her and convinced her that, you know, you have a skill that should be exploited. <laughs> and she did. And the next thing you know, she says, hey, you got your car here? I said, yeah, yeah. He said, come on back. Opened up and boxes and boxes of these lap, And they're about, and very nice for cold weather. And sure. Football games, <laughs> that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. And she makes them in all different colors. But I was really touched with the red, white, and blue. Anyhow, I hear you. <laughs> um, for the, for the, um, Covenant Care, uh, if I may, point, point of contact is uh, Alicia Townsend Hall. She's the volunteer coordinator and director. 
and you can reach her at area code 850-785-3040, 3040. One more time. Sure. Because like people may be trying to write down and they miss a digit well, or something. Yes, sir. Uh, you know, that's how I am, so. Uh, it's Alicia Townsend Hall, a sweetheart, just a lovely, lovely person, um, at 850-785-3040. Give them a call and volunteer. Yeah, volunteer. You'll get more out of it than you put in it, that's for sure. Oh, yeah, absolutely. 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 Uh, let's talk about the Military Welcome Center, which you're familiar with. Yep. The big uh, cheese and smiley. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's it. Um, one of my neighbors, Steve, who's uh, a, a good, good, loyal, patriotic Air Force guy. I'm but, old. Enough. I know it. I know it. But a wonderful man. Get a heart of gold. Anyway, one day we were talking, and he said, you know, you ought to come with me out to the military welcome center. Well, I did, got hooked. So I go out there now a couple of times a month, and I really enjoy that. And like I said, I like to go on, like the, like the veterans, I like to go on holidays or weekends, and people are coming and going, or either coming to town or leaving town for the weekend or holidays, but mostly it's for the military folks. Yeah. And it's great. That's great. I get to hear the stories. I get this, to meet the young. They're all young to me. <laughs> <laughs> and the other day, I had a great experience. Most of the people that come through there, most of the veterans, most of the soldiers, sailors, airmen, Coast Guard, they're um, local. Yeah. They attend all the Coast Guard station, the Navy sure. base, Fort Rucker up the road. But very rarely we get Army. Well, the last time I was out there, who comes strolling in and signs in but a retired sergeant major from the Army? You know, that's big doing. Sergeant major, he's I know one made the grade. One of friends was a sergeant Made the grade. Yeah. So we got talking, and one thing led to another, and met his wife, and off they went. Next person who came in, sergeant major, Army. <laughs> Two of them in a row. <laughs> and I thought, well, this is my lucky day. So I went and bought a lottery ticket, but that didn't help. <laughs> didn't help. <laughs> Lucky day. Sergeant Majors have made it. They have paid their dues. Oh, yeah. One of my very closest friends was a uh, Sergeant Major named LaSalle Dozier. Unfortunately, he, he passed uh, several years back. But I love that man to no end. What a wonderful guy. Yes, sir. And if Sergeant Majors do anything for oh. you. Oh. Yeah. So that was, that was quite a day. But anyway. Uh, my point is, you meet the nicest people coming through, and families, you know, and there's just all kinds of things to do out there uh, for the children. You even have a little back room with a, a cot in case somebody has to sleep a couple hours. Yep. yep. And we Not have. Not uncommon. Yeah. Oh yeah, a layover, sure. Yeah. And we have uh, snacks and drinks and coffee and just just about anything that you want to keep you going, and chips and. And then we have uh, stations to work with your laptop, yep. uh, plug in to recharge, lots of books. Of course, we have a Holy Bible. Yep. Um, we have uh, TV, video games for the kids with the controllers. And it's oh, just that's smart. That's yeah, yeah, I, I don't smart. even try. Oh, no, me either. <laughs> no. But uh, of course, we have a, a, a flag outside, the American flag, and POW flag, and we're right, we, the Welcome Center is right adjacent to the baggage claim. Baggage claim, yep. And it's, I kind of move the flags a little bit further out every time I go there just to make sure people see it. Yeah. Because a lot of people will walk by and look at it and keep on walking, not realizing what it is. So what I like to do is just uh, visit people. And when I see somebody with a shirt or a hat, military, I invite them in. Sure. And that's the thing to do. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But anyway, that's another place if someone would like to volunteer. You don't have to be a veteran. You just come on out, um, connect with one of the volunteers who will take you there for the first time. Yep. I think Carol Hurt still does this. It is, and I have her name and number here. Good. Yep, Good. I'll give that out in just a moment. Not a problem. I just wanted to say that it's a, eight, a four hour shift, uh, and I go from eight to noon. That's my favorite, and then noon to four, and then four to eight. And that's quite a long day, so there's usually yeah. somebody always there for our, for our military people and retirees and um, guard people, reservists and civil service people that are on active orders. Yep. They're certainly welcome too. Now, if you're interested in going out there, um, there's a point of contact, and her name is Carol Hertz, H-E-R-T-Z. And you can call her for information or scheduling 
to go with a volunteer, and her phone number is 850-265-1270. 850-265-1270. That's a short term, I get that one. But you can always count on a brother yeah. when they're tracking. <laughs> and if I go more than 10 minutes, remind me to... Not a problem. The metal, the metal waves were meshing there. So. That's it. Okay, the Military Welcome Center opened in 2010. Yep. is operated by the Bay County Veterans Council, as you know. Yes. Uh, which uh, and it runs on donations. It is not a um, um, USO. No. A lot of people no. think it's a USO yep, function. They do, and they're quick to tell them, no, we're not. No, a USO. not USO because USO is funded. Local. We're this local. is local, and it's locally funded. For the troops, all donation funds. Absolutely. Absolutely. It was created as a comfortable place for departing incoming military members. Um, they had the coffee bar, snack table, phone charger, couches, military themed decorations, which are awesome. Oh yeah, yeah. Awesome Places. coins and, and, and all, of the, all of our Medal of Honor winners pictures are up and the flag and mementos and trophies. It's just a wonderful place to relax. And the people you meet, that's my big thing. I love to meet the people, you know, and, and some of the stories that you talk about, and uh, when the old older folks come through, you can relate to them. Sure. The number, another, <laughs> another problem I have is when the younger people come through and talk about the latest and greatest technologies, I'm lost. <laughs> uh, like, uh, uh -oh. I'm yeah, lost. I'm not quite sure what that is. So. I am lost. I understand. Um, I'm going to let the cat out of the bag a little bit. You may already know this, but. As, as I mentioned earlier, we're about to go make a donation yes, yeah. for, the, for the Welcome Center. And I understood that, you know, at one time we had the upstairs room. I understand we've either gotten it back or we're getting it back. And we're going to, yeah, and we're going to uh, up the grade of the food and snacks that are being offered to the troops. Really? No, yeah. See, I didn't know that. So, yeah, well, I, I had that... Uh, Red, red phone, oh, yeah, call, I, yeah. the big cheese with, <laughs> talk to Daryl, but uh, that's pretty much, uh, I think it's a done deal, I'll find out for sure today. But uh, uh, does that mean it's going to move upstairs? Mm -mm. Oh, it's going to, oh, two, yeah, okay. Yep, both. Well, so, oh, that's good news. That's even better, yeah. What other, come on now, if you got such good news, give me a winning lottery ticket right. number, please. Well, I, I, I can't do that, I, I don't gamble. Oh, okay. But, but my wife might be able to help me, oh, yeah. <laughs> she gambles. But in any event, that's going to be um, a, a welcome addition uh, at, the, at the Welcome Center. And of course, you know also that there's a lot of motorcycle support. Oh, the yes. Warrior Watch Riders yes. stand the flag lines and the, to see the faces. Talk about on the, the flag line. coming in. Talk about the flag line. That's very important. Tell well, them. they line up to honor the troops that are either coming back or deploying. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, the look on the troops' faces is just, they're like, well, what's going on, you know? Yeah. And then when they find out it's for them, it's like, oh my goodness. And it's for us. Yeah, and sometimes the wives are, or men, because sometimes the women are deployed mm -hmm. and they're there with their kids and it's just like hallelujah time. Yes. And it really, really touches you, warms your heart. So you just, you know, when you think of that reunion, so, because we've all had some kind of reunion. You know. Well, let's talk about that a little bit. Well, do we you want to talk you? about depression and anxieties? Yeah. And Take it away. When I came back from one of my tours, I got spit on in San Francisco. And that has stayed with me a long, long time. Yeah. And it's nice to see that now things aren't like that anymore. It's nice to see that military people are held in patriotic honor which I think is very important. Of course it is. And, you know, I'm going to get on my soapbox, but you invited me, so here we go. <laughs> we can edit you out, so okay. be careful. Okay. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. A lot of people say, well, you're in a service, so you get PX privileges, commissary privileges, you get class six privileges, you get all these privileges, you know? You get a pension, if you stay your 20 or more, yeah. what a great deal. And I say, you forgot one thing. What else we give? We might have to give up our life. Exactly. Have Sign you? Sign the blank check. Do you do that? No. So, you know, that's kind of in the background. People forget that when you 
are in the military, there's always a chance you might go somewhere to protect our country. You might not come back. And, and who owns you 24-7? Mm-hmm. Yeah. The government issue, you're a GI. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Wouldn't and take you, a... You will do what you're told. Wouldn't take a thing for it. Oh, I wouldn't either. Me Absolutely either. not. No, I had. And of course, I was a draftee. I was too. Yeah. I, I, I didn't realize. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I had like a great number, 14. So I don't know what my number was, but I thought I could get out of it. You can actually look them up now. They're, oh, can you? They're online, yeah. By year and oh, all really? that stuff. Yeah. Well, I got drafted in 65. I was drafted in 71. Oh, you're just yeah. a youngster. Oh, yeah, I'm a kid. Yeah. <laughs> so when I got drafted, I, Oh, my first assignment after I went through basic training, I went to MP, military police school. And uh, I thought, me, MP, well, I uh, then went to Vietnam as an MP, and that was kind of a thrill. You know, people think that you're out there directing traffic, but oh no, you know, you're on convoy escort, patrolling the highways in town, just all kinds of things. So it's combat MPs, it, you know, that's something more than just directing traffic. Oh, yeah. yeah. People don't realize yeah, that. Yeah, then I got out of service for eight months. And I thought, well, you know, while I was in Vietnam, I applied for flight school. Never heard a word. After I was out about seven months or so, I got a letter, congratulations, you've been accepted to flight school. Huh. So I had to re-enlist, went to flight school, made it, and then made it the rest of the 18 years as a pilot. So, again, wouldn't trade it for a thing. Oh, yeah. You know, it's an experience that most people will never enjoy. Yeah. I'd do it again. Yeah. Uh, I think I just about every veteran yeah. would. Had I been a smarter young man and not already had a family, I, in hindsight, which everybody oh, knows. Oh, 2020, yes. Yeah. But uh, I should have stayed, but, again, especially in my field, because I was a radio operator, you know, 32820, and... It was, all the technology was just coming mm -hmm. into mm -hmm. fruition. I mean, there was ARPANET and DARPANET, you know, the, the beginnings, but uh, uh, probably would have been very rewarding and interesting. And well, of course, it, I was STRATCOM, U.S. STRATCOM. So. It gave me uh, a skill yeah. flying and uh, wound up flying with the FAA and retired from them. Well, and, good for you. Hmm? Good for oh, you. Oh, yeah, that was good. I enjoyed that. I I'd spent 11 years and retired out of there. And then a friend of mine who I've known forever and ever um, watched our sons grow up together from crawling under a carpet. Uh, his son just relinquished command at Fort Rucker of a battalion, a lieutenant colonel, and on the promotion list for full colonel. So he's on his way up, yeah. and I have no doubt. Yeah. And my son, um, after he graduated from Radford University, uh, he went into the Coast Guard, and eventually he got stationed here in Panama City, so we got to see him, and then everybody said, hey, college degree, go to OCS, you know, you should be an officer. So he did, and uh, became an officer, did very well, and he retired, and now he works at the Navy base, the civil service. Okay, yeah, I was a spec for, you know, the... I was too, as an MP, the, yeah. The, 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 the specialist mafia. Yep, you know? yes, sir. <laughs> Remember it well. Yeah. But anyway. So I, I can't complain. And, and my final uh, trip is uh, my friend Peter McHugh, who I'll talk about in just a second. Um, I went to Iraq as an aviation security advisor to the ambassador. And that was interesting. I was over there, and my main uh, subject was the Baghdad International Airport. But uh, the State Department is in charge of all the contracts, or uh, was, I don't know about now, but over there. Military couldn't go on the east uh, runway side of the airport because it, the first uh, ambassador gave it away as, we done? No. Oh, oh I'm sorry. We gave it away as sovereign Iraqi territory. Uh, but as a State Department person, the Russians would come into their side, the civilian side, at night with all the equipment for the police and the Iraqi army under contract. Mm. So I could go over there yeah. and sh that's what I did. And then I wound up ferreting out stolen hijacked equipment and so I had a good oh, time. Oh, that doesn't happen, does no, it? No, yeah. no, 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 no. 
So anyhow, I didn't mean to go <laughs> rambling on there. No, that's fine, not a problem. We are about to get ready to wrap up. So if you want to give another quick synopsis. Okay, I have one more, one more, one more. Do item. it. Okay, and that's. We're good, we're good. Okay, you that's the it, Masonic fraternity that I belong to. I belong to the one out on the beach. And um, I go to all of them around town. Sure, we, yeah, and we'll do that. mine, I can say, is about 50% military, which is great. And we get a lot of uh, young folks from the, the Navy base and Tyndall and locally. And the other ones I visit are, are very, very involved with the military. And at our particular lodge, the Pythagoras Lodge number 358, out on the beach, we give scholarships, we give money to the teachers for their out of pocket expenses, child IDs. Uh, we do uh, all kinds of charity for wounded warriors, veterans. Uh, it's a great, great uh, fraternity I belong to for 42 years. Just getting my feet wet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I love it. And I just want to get back to my friend Peter McHugh, who was with me when I was at the test board at Fort Rucker, at Aviation Test Board. We sat and we became fast friends, became a fraternity brother and watch our children grow up. He got me the job at the FAA, and then he's the one that called me one day, hey, I got a job for you, not knowing he was already there in Iraq. <laughs> Two times I said no, but the third time for all he did for me, I had to go. I hear you. And last but not least, last but not least, we all have heroes. One of my heroes is Bob Hope. Met him twice, both oh. tours, oh yeah. Good for you. Yeah, and the second tour I flew Les Brown and his band of renown, yes. Jerry Colonna and Vita Blue. Jerry Colonna. Oh, what a hoot he was. How many people are not gonna know who Jerry Colonna yeah. is? Like, what? Oh, he's great. <laughs> and uh, of course, all the Medal of Honor winners are my heroes. Yeah. But I wanna mention a, a friend, and his name is Mr. Richard Green, who is a retired Sergeant Major in the Medical Corps. He's one of the nicest human beings you could ever meet, a pure gentleman and a veteran through and through. Patriotic, wonderful family, all of his family, very active in military service. Mr. Richard Green, we love you. Is he here in Panama City? Yeah, you know him? Is he affiliated with uh, Tim Bedford in any way? Tim Bedford from Emerald Coast uh -huh. Behavior? I don't think so. No, okay, I didn't know. Because there's a Richard Green there that's retired army that's a doctor. So, I don't know. No, no, he's not a doctor. I may be, I no, may he's be. Sergeant Major. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> that's good enough, yeah. Richard and Green, they're both yeah, about that? well known names, so. Yeah. But that's just terrific. Yeah, Absolutely. he's a nice man. I'm just very proud to mention him because he's an inspiration. Brother Dean, thank you. My pleasure. Glad you came out. My pleasure. You are welcome anytime. Thank you. Doors open. And anytime we can get out information. For our veteran community, that's what we want to do. Well, next time I come, I'll bring my soapbox to stand on. <laughs> bring me one. You're a lot taller. So. Oh, okay. That's the only way I get elevated. Till next time, Military Hour. Thanks for watching. And we do appreciate you helping our veterans and our community at large.